Hey everybody, I'm Mike Myers and that's Richard Chapman and we are Two Bald Nerds. Um, we're going to have a, a little departure from our pure tech world. Not a complete departure, but... Uh, not completely, not completely. No, no, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's definitely some, some tech involved here. There is some tech involved for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to kind of uh, bounce off the idea of uh, these uh, balloons that have been coming over from ostensibly China, even though we're not 100% positive that's true even. and. Uh, just weigh in on a little bit and let, let's see uh, how you and I feel about that, Richard. So, so are we, are we completely sure? Cause listen, you and I are both nerds. Are we completely sure here that we're just not seeing accidental uh, rule breaking of the prime directive here? I mean, do, you know what I mean? Like is, is somebody up there out there looking at us, watching us and they're, they're not supposed to let us know that they're there, but they're accidentally making a mistake and letting us know. Come on. Well, the interesting, but <laughs> the answer is, is yes. Uh, but I don't, I think this has probably been going on for a while and because it finally something leaked out or a, a highly visible thing went over the United States that uh, it, it got to the forefront. Um, plus, you know, I've taken a, a look, at least the initial one, the, the first balloon. And if you look underneath it, there's clearly a sensor array there. There's clearly uh, solar panels that's powering something. And it's also my understanding that these things were propulsive, that they they were steerable to some extent. I've so, heard I've heard both. I've heard some yes, some no. Like they didn't they didn't appear to be, you know, able to be controlled. So I don't know. I I, I what do what do we I how, we don't know what to believe, right? It's kind of well, hard to know. I, 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 I've never heard anybody straight up say they were not capable of being controlled. I mean, trying to push around a spherical balloon is kind of a pain in the rear end, but uh, mm -hmm. as any hot air balloonist can tell you. But, um, uh, and I'm not going to quote any sources because it's all, this is this is a pure conjecture episode, brother. And <laughs> hey, this is this nothing is, but opinions and feelings. This is uh, just two bald nerds talking about something that yeah. is kind of in the news, right? Yeah. It, 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 but I, I think it's an interesting issue. First of all, my my big question is, with satellite technology is as good as it is today, uh, what, what are we doing with balloons? So I, I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, I, I doubt China has our uh, optical capabilities like our, what is it, the KH-11 Big Bird Recon satellites uh, or whatever they've been replaced with um that uh, they they probably can't match us so there is an argument i mean even google earth will still use aircraft to map out uh neighborhoods and stuff because they can get a better resolution on an airplane as opposed to at least commercial quality satellite imagery uh so i, I there could be an argument for it but it's such an arbitrary this reminds me i don't know if you remember in world war ii that japan sent over balloons full of explosives and these balloons came over the United States. They set a couple of forest fires, and they uh, one actually did kill, of all things, like a school outing, a teacher and a few children. This is back in the forties. So wow. there is there is a this, this did happen in a much more crude and much more violent way, uh, you know, seventy five years ago. Um, you know, the prevailing west to east winds from Asia over into the Western Hemisphere kind of uh, make that a, an easy thing to do. But what bothers me is I don't know why it was so exciting for the for people to, you know, why didn't we shoot it down? Well, the part that I don't think we hear about is that we wanted to see what the heck it was doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I assure you that we knew that that thing was in the air 20 minutes after it left ostensibly China. And uh, I think that we were just interested in what it was doing. And, uh, you know, it's not that hard to look at the underside of a, a sensor package and based on lens size and things like that, you can at least guesstimate, uh, mm -hmm. at least in terms of optics and things like that. And I think we were just curious. It, it, I think our military was curious. Um, and also, who wants to waste uh, a half million dollar AIM 9M? Sidewinder missile on a twenty thousand dollar balloon package. So, uh, you know, I, th 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 that's my opinion. Um, 
there's there's a lot there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to unpack with this stuff you know my first question is what is this getting what kind of value are they getting out of this versus a satellite so you you mentioned it earlier i mean are you telling me that this is going to get better imagery than a satellite yeah sure it's a lot closer take the same it, camera I mean, it is <clears throat> it is inside the atmosphere a little bit more so i mean it, it was in like 40 it was at, they were at 40,000 feet well, the one, the one in the one that they shot down over, the, uh, like here, and I think they said it was like twenty thousand feet. So it was. Yeah, I think that was that was lower. Yeah. So yeah, it, it would be improvements in imagery would be one thing. You know, the other thing is is uh, 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 signal intelligence. Um, you know, Wi-Fi doesn't go that far. Yeah. Uh, a good Wi-Fi sensor, you know, put a decent, uh, you know, Yagi style antenna on there and spin it a little bit, and it could pick up every SSID uh, from you know, Sacramento to Portland, Maine. Uh, so that, that this is all conjecture on my part, Richard. I really want to stress that I do not have any DOD connections or anything here. Uh, I, was, so. I was just about to say, should we have like a disclaimer that says we are not, you know, two bald nerds are not balloon experts and or uh, <laughs> aeronautical experts and or weapons experts and or... <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard, in in uh, in terms of full disclosure, I do have some balloon expertise. When uh, I was in, when I was in the fourth grade, there used to be this magazine called Boys Life. Yeah. And at the back of the magazine, you could like you know, can you draw Bambi and all this stuff? And one of the things it said is build your own hot air balloon. Oh, so in cool. the fourth grade, I put down six bucks or whatever it was back then, and I bought. A hot air balloon, which ended up being nothing more than pieces of tissue paper that were shaped kind of like like this. You ready? <laughs> and, and I had to glue the seams together, and it made a. And I'm talking tissue like cray paper, okay? Yeah. And uh, and they they showed you how to hold it up with a pole, and then you use a piece of clay pipe and make a little fire. And there was a wire ring at the bottom, and uh, we went ahead and made this thing, okay? And we launched it. But I also would like to mention, Richard, that this was the 70s, and I lived about 20 miles from a little place called Whiteman Air Force Base, oh, okay. <laughs> which back then was one of the primary uh, uh, launch infrastructures for back then. It was like the Minuteman three missiles and mm -hmm. B-52s. Now it's all B-2s. And uh, yeah, we got to scramble. Wait, re refresh my memory. Whiteman, is that... Missouri, no. Missouri, yeah. yeah so my, you know what? My dad lived there as a kid, actually. His his uh, so his dad was Air Force, and he lived there at Whiteman Air uh, Air Force Base. Yeah, I lived in a little town called Sedalia, Missouri, and uh, in theory, uh, we caused a scramble. Uh, because uh, I, I made a UFO, yay! <laughs> well, that's that's the joking part of this whole situation for me is oh they're just UFOs, you know it's well they are UFOs. UFOs they're unidentified yeah. flying objects that doesn't mean it's some space alien uh, but that's that's a whole other topic I could get alien. into uh, <laughs> but you know the, the thing is is first of all the Chinese some Chinese source said yes it's ours it's off course we're sorry but then that got like almost instantly dumped. And then the the Chinese, and again, I'm just trying to, I, I cannot quote every news source. I'm assuming this is easily enough researched on your own. And then China eventually started saying, you know, Americans have been doing this to us for years. What's yeah. the big deal? So eh, whatever. I, I mean, I could see us doing something like that. You know, as, as Americans, we're, you know, nosy. Well, why, why, why shoot them down now? Like what, what's the... Press. What's changed? Like, why all of a sudden are we shooting them down? If well, they, if they've been if they've been there, if if you know people that study weather and 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 all that fun stuff, if if they're doing balloons and so forth, they're not being shot down. I mean, like, why? I, I guess I I guess my question is, why all of a sudden are we shooting them down? Like, it's it can't be pressure from people going, what is this above our sky? What? Why aren't we shooting this down? Well, because I mean, most of the time they're utterly invisible to the naked eye. Um. This one at 40,000 feet, a lot of these uh, balloons go much higher than that. Uh, but uh, the, the thing that uh, surprised me is that after a few of these balloons went by, what I have heard, and again, this is just a, a source that I'm unable to quote, is that 
everybody's now so paranoid that the Air Force is even shooting down our own weather balloons. <laughs> so, and again, they're using missiles. I mean, why not just use you know, just fly past know, it really but... fast. You know, <laughs> let your afterburners smoke that thing. Right. I bet there's a bunch of Air National Guard F-16 drivers going, yeah. They would love that challenge. <laughs> oh, come on. How often do you get to go weapons hot? You know, I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I I think espionage has been going on in one form or, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Aerial surveillance has been going on easily since the 40s, late 40s uh, with aircraft and uh, later satellites that, you know, to come up with one more little thing like this. I don't even necessarily know that it's a bad thing, to be honest with you. I think it's, it is the spy versus spy game that has been played uh, from countries for a long, long time. And one of them just happened to get super visible where a bunch of people are going, Bubba, what the heck is that? And, uh, right. you know, got everybody excited. But uh, it, it, ha- it listen, it happens in the computers all the time. I mean, I can tell you, I we see traffic from China every single day. I'm sure they're seeing traffic from the U.S. every single day as well. It's, and did you know that in uh, some cases the United States even supports this? Mm-hmm. That uh, uh, after the uh, not salt to maybe it was the salt to agreement. That and as far as I know, this is still happening. Although it may have ended by the late '90s, in that uh, an American observer is allowed to jump in a Russian airplane and the Russians drive it. But the American observer says, I want you to fly over these positions. And this was part of the uh, agreement. And that the, uh, well, I, let's say USSR, I shouldn't say Russian. That, and that the USSR had the same deal here in the United States. And oh. uh, so that's why, like in uh, southern Arizona, where you have those, uh, the arm rack, the where, the, the where they put all the airplanes in the desert. Yeah, the airplane graveyard, yeah. And you'll see where they chop them up into big pieces. Yeah. That's done for observation reasons so that we can verify that X number of aircraft have been destroyed. And the Russians, the Russians did. I'm going to say past tense because I have a hard time believing that this is still an active program. But uh, in that case, literally, the Russian would get in an American aircraft, a U.S. Air Force aircraft, and say, fly to this coordinate, now fly to that coordinate. And then the Russians did the same. The USSR did the same for us back in the day. So. You know, it's it's all part of the spy game that we all get into to, you know, hopefully, yeah, it, it's interesting because, you know, I actually grew up in a, a in the world of duck and cover and, uh, you know, having the civil defense crackers and all that kind of stuff. And I remember as a very young man, teenager, thinking to myself that one day I'm going to have a grandkid look at me and go, what was it like to live under that level of you know, nuclear Here. threat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get into what's happening in the Ukraine right now, I'm, I'm, uh, but, you know, that was where there would be a, you know, 3,000 megaton exchange. And, uh, you know, we were all going to fry. And, uh, you know, so I would like to think that all of this espionage or observation, surveillance, I shouldn't use espionage, is potentially a good thing in that, well, it kept us all from getting blown up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So if this is part of the process that we have to do, incursions take place, worse comes to worse, we can take an AIM-9L and shoot the thing down. <laughs> well, information gathering and information, uh, you know, I guess you could say mining, let's put it that way, um, is obviously very important. Uh, I See, personally, I think that the, the next war is already being fought and it's exactly what we're experiencing in cybersecurity. Yep. I was going to say the same thing that I'm far more concerned about that. Yeah. It is interesting though. We've, I've, I've heard people already, you know, throwing out the conjecture of a a new cold war. And I'm like, really, you know, like, come on, let's not go too far. (laughs) I mean, I, I can, I can see putting all, all thoughts on the table, but, you know, logic it out for a minute and see, does it make sense? We're so economically connected to, you know, every other country in the world as well, too. I mean, it, I think it just 
it, it, it's tough to to wrap your brain around you know any sort of crazy extreme thoughts but well as long as you have democracy <laughs> as long as you have democracies richard of course now if you have a uh dictatorship yeah. and and maybe uh n- n- maybe they don't call it that but you know the reality is is when you have a single head of state that's when craziness happens but that is a political discussion that even i choose not to dive into today I was going to say two bald nerds might want to avoid the uh, the political discussions too much, right? I mean, we no. want people to watch us, but we don't. I don't know how no, much controversy. No. We want. <laughs> it's 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 not controversy when it's pure conjecture, right? So yeah, agree. Yeah, so, agree. Yeah. Sure, yeah. why not? I'll agree with you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, I was watching something yesterday actually, and the example they were giving, they were talking about AI and they were talking about facial recognition and things like that. And they were showing examples of how many people walk around in the streets in a country that will remain unnamed at the moment, uh, where literally everybody's wearing, purposefully wearing goggles and masks and hiding under umbrellas so that they don't show up on cameras. Oh, and yeah. That's, that- that's that's kind of some next level futuristic kind of crazy stuff in in my opinion and i think that's where information gathering maybe has gone too far but again there's that there's that line there's that line of how far do we want to go here <laughs> although i am terrified that the ads that i'm getting on my uh, phone and things mm. these days are really <laughs> geared towards somebody who's in their late or you know early 60s it's like you know just imagine what somebody like me would get for ads. Yep, I'm getting them all at it. So, so well, hopefully, I, I was I was actually with some friends on Sunday, and we were we were talking about baklava, and one of our friends there, they when they turned on their phone, they you know flipped up their phone, they had an advertisement for baklava. So, oh, but, uh, no, dude, about four years ago, I did the same thing. I I wired my house up big time IoT, big time. And uh, I used a certain type of uh, service where if you said something, it would then listen to you. We'll leave it yeah. at that. And yeah. it gave robust experimentation to it. And yeah. uh, it absolutely does do that. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, well-geared ads, I'm not that paranoid about. You know, it's, it's uh, when it wants to see my retinal scan or something like that. that <laughs> All right, Mike. How do we how do we end this episode? Like, where are we going with this? What are we? Doing? I can I, I, I give you guys a real good answer. <laughs> One of the nice things about being around for a long time and being in technology for a long time is that as nerds, we love to get alarmist about things. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, is everybody goes to work every day, and you pay the mortgage, and you worry about your waistline, and that's never going to change, man. And I. I it takes too much stomach lining of worry before you eventually realize that you're in your early 60s and everything's okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm happy to hear that. Although I, I'm not excited about the whole early 60s part, but that's a whole different discussion. So, <laughs> Hey, a lot of people don't get the option to get that far, buddy. That's true. That's uh, true. I, 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 I will consider myself lucky if I get to that point. <laughs> And remember, no matter how old you are, I will always be older than you. That's true. That's very true. (laughs) Richard, fun talk, man. Yeah, absolutely. Always a pleasure. All right. Bye, guys. If you like Two Bold Nerds, check out our entire playlist right here. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you there.